Welcome to Freelance Sucks. Here we discuss the dark side of freelancing about which nobody usually talks out loud. And in this show, we speak with experienced freelancers, and I'm sure listening to their stories helps you prepare for freelancers' challenges. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9am.works. And my guest is Mark Clemens, who freelanced to raise funds to build his business, worked with freelancers for almost 10 years, and keep doing that to build the 9am platform all-in-one operational system for freelancers that simplifies freelancers' lives. So, welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I know you are a CEO, you are a founder, you are an entrepreneur, you are a business person. Still, you were a freelancer. And for you, what was the most challenging part of being a freelancer? Getting paid. <laughs> I absolutely hated it. I know my first client... It's not that they didn't pay and I knew that they would pay, but I think I had 14 days payable and they paid me after 45 or 60 days and I had to send three reminders. And for each and every invoice it was like that. And I, I started freelancing after I had a bankruptcy with uh, with a company and so I really needed the cash. So I lived off that money like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, so to me, payment is the worst thing. And you send them reminders and they still didn't pay. Yeah, they were no, they were sending nice messages like, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, we have our payment run next week again. And um, oops, I just need to get this person still confirmed and like this typical stuff. And it was literally just internal processes with them. Um, but it uh, first of all, I find it, it also feels not nice. So you, you freelance and you have the feeling um, I deliver my work and somehow uh, you, you get little acknowledgement because in a lot of cases as a freelancer, the only acknowledgement you get is actually getting paid. Um, but not always, but it happens more often than you think. Um, but anyway, if you get paid late, it's, yeah, I think it's the worst. I always have this dilemma myself and I want to ask you, do you prefer to get paid upfront or for the job you've done? No, I like to get paid for the job I've done. I don't know. I think if you do similar service over and over again, then you can do perhaps partial upfront payment. But somehow for me, it feels better to, to get paid afterwards. But I think it depends as well what kind of customers you have. If you work in a field where you have a lot of customers that tend to not pay, <laughs> then ask at least for 50% down payment. Yeah, it's a good tip, by the way. Check, check your niche and see how it goes there. And what was the most time-consuming thing you must do with a freelancer? I think sales. Hmm. I think sales, not when you're in a project, but especially when you um, start freelancing. Um, and when you start freelancing, setting up legal and accounting and so on. And I think later on, it's probably accounting and payments again. I think just these little things and getting your receipts in there and yeah, all of these little elements um, I find quite annoying and um, take a lot of time. Tell me more about sales part. What do you mean by saying that? Well, I think most people start with, um, so first you need a profile, then you look for the right platforms that you can get listed on. Then you talk to all of your friends and business contacts and I don't know what, and then you meet them and then you chat with them and then you follow up. Um, and then you have some projects and then you need to follow up on the project and is it happening? And, and then afterwards you have the contract and negotiate that. So I think it has um, lots of elements that that can be annoying. If you're a freelancer for a while and you set up and you get the projects in and they're good, um, but Still, if you want to increase your rate, if you want to get better projects, you need to continue doing that um, so that you get them, right? They don't always naturally just come. You, you can perhaps at some point stay at your rate and, and get projects, but you want to have the perfect fit. Um, and for that, you should always be a bit on the salesy side as well. I remember in the episode with Brie Lever, she told that when she started her practice, she had like 100 coffees. So it was online or offline coffees, but like for 100 days, it was like one coffee a day. And she just go, went out there, told about her proposal, talked to people. And so 
I feel that you've done very similar, very much the same. And what was the structure of conversations? Um, I don't know. I like this, especially if you sell to your network. I mean, or not to your network, but to your network. Um, it's less about selling and more about um, catching up and letting them know what you what you can offer and what you're looking for. Um, so, especially when it goes to um, getting referrals to others, the mm -hmm. the key of getting a referral is that as many people as possible have you on top of their mind when they think about the skill or the service that you're offering. Mm -hmm. And that often doesn't need that many words or a big pitch or something that that is enough of saying, oh yeah, my last project, I worked with React Native for this car sharing company and now I'm looking for something new. Then the other person understood, hey, there's a React Native person that worked in, in car sharing mobility topics and is looking for a job, right? And, and it's, it's fairly small, so you don't need to have a long conversation about it. Um, it is something that you can even drop just on the, uh, on the side or at the end of the conversation or what the like. So I, I don't think that it needs to be necessarily um, a pitch mm -hmm. or, or sales conversation. Um, but it, of course, it also depends on your stage. If you um, start freelancing and you're not sure what kind of service you can offer, then you might want to talk to former colleagues, to friends that have somehow worked with you and, and just bounce forth and back what your skills are and get a bit of feedback from those people. So tell them a bit what you've done, get feedback, and then they help you shape your service, your your offering. At yeah. the same time, they get an understanding of, of now they have on top of their mind, okay, um, Mark could offer this. Um, so perhaps I know someone or the next time I meet someone that asks, do you know someone that? Um, they think of you. And I feel like it's even better when you ask for help because if somebody helped you, they will definitely remember that they helped you and they will keep <laughs> in mind you as an expert and like, oh, I helped this person. So yeah, I'm sure that this person is a good expert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I think it depends a bit on your relationships, um, but I would never make it too... It's not about... It, it's human interaction. It's having a relationship and... and uh, seeing how you can help each other. So it's meet, chat, and say, hey, I have X, Y, Z situation. Can you help me? Or you just drop it. Like, uh, I think it's it's quite open. And what was the most nerve-consuming thing you must do with a, as a freelancer? Payments. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's all about money, you know? <laughs> um, I can't imagine. No, I think... I think in the beginning it is when you have to break up with the client. Mm. I think the first time you break up with the client, it's uh, it's weird that you're like, um, and you might not even have another job, right? And you might feel not not in in the position to be allowed to say, "Oh, I I quit the client." I say, "No, sorry, guys, it's not working." Um, yeah, I just spoke with a with a freelancer who's a good friend and worked with us as well. And, and yeah, and she said, well, I'll call this client and what, what they want, I don't believe that it can be delivered because it doesn't make sense and I don't want to do it. And I told them now, right? But how do I tell them? But it's like, it's sometimes a painful process and it's it's sometimes a bit uh, nerve wracking to to come up with the right way because you don't want to tell someone, um, oh, you're idiots, I don't want to work with you. You, <laughs> you rather want to say, it's it's not my style. It's I, I'm not sure that I can provide enough um, value in this situation or the setup. So finding the right um, setup to to break up with the client. Yeah, it's very similar to breaking up with a partner, you know. So, <laughs> but but in this it's case, it's you, it's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but in this case, you know, you kind of can um, propose somebody else to work for. But it it would be weird yeah. in real, in real life, you know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have this nice guy, by the way. <laughs> so, as a freelancer, did you ever feel professional loneliness? Like it's nothing you can, not, nobody you can talk about with your challenges and stuff you are dealing with? 
I, I think I have a problem that I've been most of my life as a solo entrepreneur. So mm. uh, it's, it's, it's all, it, it feels almost like my constant state. <laughs> Luckily, not d- these days with the fantastic team um, that we have at 9 a.m. And, and we're having you, Yuri, as well. Um, so really great people to talk with. And I think this is um, it's the biggest challenge to find people that you can exchange with. Um, I think meetups help. I think they're freelancer meetups. If you don't know freelancers, I think it's 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 nice to have gather a group of people around you that are also freelancers that you can um, chat with about and, and make it really um, an, an active thing. Um, you might not be able to talk with your partner or with um, a friend that is a uh, fixed simply perhaps um, hadn't experienced the same thing or or don't know how to understand these situations. Um, but finding other freelancers helps a lot. And I think making in, like, there are ways and ways of freelancing, right? You you can join a company and try to mingle with the people and talk with them. You don't don't have to. I think especially in a remote setup, it's difficult. Yeah. But then you need to make sure that you have some other kind of ways of, of um, filling your, your social batteries, um, getting the support that you need. Exactly. And if your friend wanted to become a freelancer, what are top three things you'd advise them to consider before doing that? Do I really want, do you really want to do it? That's good. <laughs> it's um, the first question, the first tip. Okay. Um, no, I, I think, yeah, well, you need to really consider if you want to do it. Are you in the right um, setup in your life that, that you want to do it? I, I personally think you, if you want to freelance, anyone can freelance at any time. Um, I think there are a lot of cases in which you can start in parallel and, and that usually starts with talking to people, talking to your colleagues, talking to friends, understanding what your services are. Um, because what you do there is you sharpen your profile, you, sh- you sharpen your your offering while at the same time doing sales as what we discussed before, right? So um, both happens. You understand better what you need to sell and what you can sell. Because again, you, you might be a... I don't know, controlling manager at a, at a corporate. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it that you offer to be a controller? <laughs> I don't know. Being like, is it, is it Excel skills? Is it financial planning? Is it um, cost calculations? Uh, what is it exactly? Um, so really understanding what is your sweet spot in the service mm-hmm. that you can offer. And, and while you do that, you already do sales and you might get the first project. And it's like, ah, now I got the right project. Now I can jump from an employment to to freelancing um you need to get your finances straight um i read the other day that freelancers say on average you should have about fifteen thousand euros uh saved to start freelancing mm-hmm. because it helps you to not get into financial distress um again it's very personal um i'm i'm personally i'm i'm full-on entrepreneur so i'm risk taker um there are people that are less risk takers, so make sure that you have a bit more money um, on the side that you, you can say, well, if something doesn't work out, if I need to do something, then then I have that cash. And make a very conscious um, choice on, on your financial planning, on your um, savings for the future. So um, how is it about pension? Do you want to go into the um, statutory, the, the governmental pension, or um, where do you pay in? Do you save yourself? How do you save? Um, do you do any kind of invalidity insurance? To me, I personally, for me, as invalidity insurance was the first thing. I have pretty much no insurance side of health. Um, but invalidity insurance is my number one insurance. And I'm paying quite a bit for it, but just because I know as long as I can work, I can make money. But if I can't, I yeah. can't make money. Um, so I think getting, getting your setup in, 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 in a way that you feel comfortable and once you're comfortable, then you can full on go into freelancing, into enjoying the freedom, the independence and working yeah, with am- amazing clients. It's a, it's, it's really good tips. And like talking about pension or invalidity, like usually people do not think about that, but you know, we don't want to think about bad stuff, but life happens. So totally yeah. have to. And usually as an employee, you're covered in, in most countries, right? But as a freelancer, yeah. you're often not covered or at least not by default covered. So yeah. um, keeping that in mind um, makes sense. 
Mark, I wish to have the sky is the limit, but time is the limit. So the final question, if you were starting freelancing today, is there one thing you would have done differently? I think I would have asked for more help. Hmm. I think I reached out too little to other friends, to communities, to um, people like you, Yuri, right? It, like I, I just, I did it a bit too much solo. I, I think um, there's no need to do everything solo. It's, it's okay to ask people for help and support. Yeah, it's hard to understand and even harder to act, but yeah, I totally agree with you. And yeah, Mark, thank you very much for being so open and uh, for sharing your challenges. Thank you. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button on five stars and share it with your friends. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.